Hi, I'm Kate Snow from Kate's Homeschool Math Help, and today I have four simple habits that get kids ready for algebra. I mostly focus on elementary math, but over the years I've frequently had friends ask me to tutor their algebra students, uh, so I've had the chance to work with a few algebra students um, over the years. And what I've found in working with them is that they usually don't have a whole lot of trouble understanding the actual algebra, the actual new concepts of the algebra course. What they end up struggling with is writing everything down. Uh, they don't have the writing and work habits that they need to be able to keep track of all their steps, to organize their work, and uh, so once they hit this math where they can't keep things in their heads, they lose track of things, and they make a lot of simple mistakes that keep them from getting answers correct. So today I'm going to show you four simple habits that you can teach your kids, starting really as soon as they're copying problems from a book, as young as, say, second or third grade. Um, that will help them build good work habits and get them ready for algebra down the road. So the first one is to skip a line between problems. This is so simple, but it makes a huge difference. I once worked with a girl who was so sweet, she worked so hard, but she was really trying to save all of the paper in her notebooks. And so every single uh, question went right crammed up against the next one. You could hardly tell where one started or one began. So instead of putting problems right next to each other, just teach your kids to skip a line. It makes everything much neater. It gives their problems a little bit of room to breathe so they can see what they're doing. And you know, notebooks are cheap. We can get them for 20 cents at the start of the school year. So just stock up and encourage your kids to kind of spread out on their books. They don't have to scrunch everything right together. Second, teach your kids that um, the equal sign actually means equals. I know this feels pretty obvious to us as adults that the equal sign means equal, but a lot of kids tend to think that the equal signs means more something like the, the answer is coming. So for example, to solve this problem, 15 plus 6 minus 8 plus 3, what they'll do is they'll write all the problems in order with equal signs between them. So 15 minus 6 equals 9, and then they'll do the minus 8 from the original problem, that equals 1. And then they'll add on the 3 from the original problem, that equals 4. But this isn't actually true. We, here we have 15 minus 6 actually equals 9. 9 minus 8, minus 8 actually equals 1. 1 plus 3 equals 4. Those things are not all equal to each other. And so instead, what we want to do is to teach kids to break those up so that everything that's connected by an equal sign is actually equal to each other. 15 plus 6 equals 21. 21 minus 8 equals 13, 13 plus 3 equals 16. This idea of keeping the two sides of the equal sign balanced really pays off later when they get to algebra. Third, teach your kids to work down the paper, not across the paper. So for example, for a child who had this word problem, that Amy bought six notebooks for $3 each and five pens for $2 each, how much did she spend? And the child could write it out this way by writing 6 times 3 plus 5 times 2, that equals 18 plus 10, which equals 28. So this child's using the equal sign correctly. All um, three parts of this equation are equal to each other. Um, but this child's getting in the habit of writing things across rather than down. Writing things down gets them in the habit of keeping track of their steps, be able to look to the line above as they write each line below and to work from that line. Um, and so it makes a big difference for kids when they do get to algebra. Uh, one easy way to help kids get in this habit is to simply take their notebook pages and fold them in half. Then all of a sudden they have two columns. Um, so they can work down one column, then go back up to the other column and work down that column. Uh, the fourth simple habit to get your kids in is to have them use a horizontal fraction bar, like we have in these examples. This one half, three sevenths, or two and one fourth. Using the horizontal fraction bar is good for two reasons. Um, it helps kids keep the numerator and the denominator in their correct places and understand what they mean better. Um, when they're slanted like this, they look kind of close together. It's a little bit harder for kids to keep track of what they're doing. But the other thing that's good about it is it prepares them for um, having expressions like this one down here, like x plus 2 over 3x squared plus 6. Um, it helps them to think of those kinds of expressions as fractions and then to be able to apply what they learn about fraction in the earlier years to um, algebra when they get to it. So these are the four simple habits that it, you should start teaching your child as soon as they're copying problems in a notebook. 
one, to skip a line between problems. Um, two, that equals actually means e equal sign actually means equals. It does not mean the answer is coming. On um, three, to work down their pages, not across their notebook pages, and to fold it in half to form columns if that's helpful. And then fourth, to use a horizontal fraction bar. Um, with these four tips, you'll have even your third, fourth, fifth graders uh, developing good habits that will serve them well down the road with algebra. Thanks for watching, and happy math.